In the 22nd century, there was a time of incredible technological progress and innovation. The game has provided pleasure to modern individuals who have become desensitized to it. It was pretty straightforward thanks to some fancy technology. They could now detect tiny electrical signals on the brain's nerves. It's like you're grooving and feeling the rush of nerve stimulation. Right now in the fifth generation, the speed of nerve simulation has increased by a hundredfold. Yet another simulation goes beyond the physical realm, engaging all five senses and provoking deep contemplation. And because of this, everyone just can't resist. The main character was just chilling on the bed, casually moving his hand while remaining quiet. He laughed, gesturing with his hands. Yep, he couldn't help. It's so he wondered what his next move would be as a seasoned gamer. Lee Hoyan has some free time. He was flailing his hands once more. Honestly, he wasn't really keen on giving up gaming. After a decade since the fourth generation of the popular game, a new installment called Labyrinth World has been released to celebrate its 10th anniversary. Lee Hoyan was ranked 97 out of the 300 million people who played Labyrinth City. Rodrigo El Drago made it to the 97th ranking after going through a lot of challenges and difficulties. He didn't want to stop because he wasn't great at gaming. Lee Hoyan had a big smile on his face and thought to himself, What's the fun if he can't resist? The developers were really eager for him to return and even sent him a free headset. The headset starts to connect, and Lee Hoyan is no ordinary ranker. The system told him he has just entered the labyrinth world. A notification popped up saying that gamer Lee Hoyan's user code identification is complete. And he just popped up out of nowhere. He got another notification saying that Rodrigo El Drago's achievement point ranking in Labyrinth City will be transferred. The main character recalled how they mentioned that the server had been boosted by a hundredfold. As he gazed upon the city, he couldn't help but feel a slight sense of awe at how it appeared different from when he first started. He's got a whopping 1,975,003,983 achievement conversion points in Labyrinth City. The system notification informed him that he would receive an additional 197. 500 CP when he created his own character. The main character couldn't believe it when everyone gave him 1 CP for every 1,000 achievement points. He couldn't help but wonder why they were being so stingy. He clenched his teeth in frustration, wondering what on earth this was. He wondered if this is how they were treating rankers, which is why. He was about to say something, but then a notification popped up, asking him to choose the character sheet he wanted to buy. A large screen suddenly appeared in front of him, displaying the first character sheet. The first sheet was an enhanced plan sheet, with an unidentifiable plan sheet and initial funds of one gold. There was also an enhanced premium luxury sheet available, priced at 15,000 CP. The system just wanted to let him know about the awesome features of the top-of-the-range premium luxury sheet, 7,000 CP. It comes with a magic grade combat skill, one magic grade combat trait, triple speed increased combat related proficiency, and a veteran's rare grade weapon set. Pretty cool, right? And shiny gold premium luxury sheet, 7,000 CP, starting funds of 10,000 gold, 1,500 pi on privately owned land. Lee Hoyan was taken aback, wondering what on earth was going on. The main character suddenly got all serious realizing that those people made it complicated. He also realized that others might have thought he would mess up and create a terrible character. He quietly wondered what the moderators had in mind. So if you guys believe that this ranker can be fooled after just 100 days of thinking, you might want to reconsider. A notification popped up, letting him know that he had chosen the enhanced premium. Luxury Sheet 1500 CP With a big smile on his face, the protagonist felt like he had triumphed over capitalism. The system gave him a heads up, letting him know that the purchasing price was a whopping 3 billion, and inquired if he was interested in making the payment. Lee Hoyan was sporting a crazy smile on his face. He's made a ton of money as a ranker, so this situation wouldn't faze him. Yep. 
This guy is quite the character. He got another notification about choosing a fancy, high-end luxury sheet. Go ahead and create your character, the system said. Here are his stats. Level 1, 10%, male, 20 years old, weighs 60 kilograms, no affiliation, and just a regular person. He's doing great, with his health status at 100% for HP, MP, and SP. Just your average stats. Strength 10, Stamina 10, Insight. 10, Intelligence 10, Charm 10. He has a skill that, and it doesn't cost any character points. He also have some traits that don't cost any character points either. Oh, and he also have a title that doesn't cost any character points either. Got some equipment here. CP, zero, no weapons, just some old lion clothing set, waist, and an old linen pocket, and his CP is 197,500 CP. No personal information. Was provided. No name or class specified. Li Hoyan thought to himself that since things are like this, he might as well change his name to something more grand. A notification popped up saying his name was Wilhelm Meyer in the Labyrinth City. Li Hoyan casually pressed something on his stats, a smile on his face. He thought to himself that it's finally time to use the CP he earned in the previous game. He had a big grin on his face, thinking in a wild way that he's not just an ordinary person. In addition, the virtual synchronization rate is ridiculously low, referred to as a ranker, and the control is extremely poor. And that's why he decided to go in a different direction. Trying something different was the phrase used when exploring a fresh path. He insisted. I'm not a weirdo. But his. Eyes seemed to suggest otherwise. Here's what he looked like during the last game. Hey there, Rodrigo. A mischievous smile began to spread across his face. Just you wait, new labyrinth. I'll reveal the incredible secret once more. He thought to himself with a touch of madness. And what he was about to pull out of his computer and transfer to something else was going to be absolutely incredible. The system was making sure it was in sync with the labyrinth world. And then it began syncing up. Syncing is done, and a notification pops up, letting him know he's arrived in the city of Brown. There were a bunch of NPCs and players just strolling around. There were lots of gorgeous houses and where an NPC sold their delicious food. All of a sudden, Everyone NPCs and players alike were left. Speechless and terrified as they laid eyes on a mysterious figure standing before them. As soon as the person showed up, he had a scowl on their face. The guy had this sort of mysterious vibe, and his eyes were like glowing embers. Overall, the guy seemed to resemble the demon king himself. Li Hoyan was visibly nervous, perspiring profusely. Some random NPC happened to be glancing in his direction, and the intimidating guy immediately turned his gaze towards her. The girl quickly averted her eyes, trembling with fear. He tugged her hand and spoke in a low, menacing voice while the woman begged him to release her, tears welling up in her eyes. The man seemed unfazed as he intensified his presence, staring at her with a demanding gaze, insisting that she reveal the location of the guild. The woman, clearly frightened, pleaded for her life asking him to spare her. However, the man showed no concern and continued to threaten her, warning that he would kill her instantly if she made any noise. Li Hoyan just froze in fear, desperately wanting to intervene and stop the erratic man. But he was pretty scared, too. People began whispering as they looked at the demon. Someone mentioned the rookie adventures are coming today are different as he was shocked looking at this guy. One player was pretty impressed and decided to ask another player if they had seen their item set. It was definitely not a joke. It was the real deal. So, the other guy was like, Dude, when he glanced away for a sec he got this warning that this is a dungeon boss. The other person talked to the rest, mentioning that if they had encountered him in the back alley, they would be terrified. The guy gave Li Hoyan a look and casually mentioned that he had discovered the whereabouts of the guild. The system notification popped up, informing the protagonist that Caesar's popularity had increased by one person. People were giving Li Hoyan and Caesar dirty looks, cursing them as no-level bastards. 
Who's that other guy with the underling in tow? What's his deal? The protagonist simply glared at them, annoyed. The other person told the others that their duo doesn't make any sense. The crazy demon and Lee Hoyan showed up at a different spot. A group of people with a tough appearance glanced at them without uttering a word or making any moves. The wild demon Caesar's face remained serious as ever. Lee Hoyan glanced around, making sure he wouldn't get robbed, while the woman continued to cry. This place was the Ibra Muslims. The man seemed quite agitated, questioning the people around him about their curious stares. He warned them in a rather intense manner, asking if they had a death wish. Lee Hoyan glanced at Caesar and let out a curse, wondering where things had gone wrong. The protagonist gave this guy a serious glare, thinking to himself that this guy totally resembled the ultimate boss of the demon world. He couldn't wrap his head around the fact that all the effort he put into creating his trusty sidekick had gone down the drain. Or had it? About an hour ago, during the character creation, Lee Hoyan was pretty stoked when he checked out the stats of the new character he made. Personal Info, CP Invested, 62. Name, Caesar. Class, None. Level, 1, 0%. Gender, Male. Age, 15. Height, 170 centimeters. Weight, Affiliation, None. Status, Commoner. Health Status, Invested CP 186. HP, 100%. MP, 100%. SP, 100%. Basic Stats, Invested CP 33638. Strength, 20. Stamina, 10. Agility, 10. Insight, 10. Intelligence, 10. Tolerance, 10. Charm, 10. Possessed Skills, Invested CP 12400. Combat Genius. Strong Heart. Strong Body. Tough Resilience. Got some cool stuff here, eh? Ruthless Murderer Title, Iron Will, Glass Equipment Weapon, Armor aka Reaper, Leather Armor, Reaper Steps, Leather Shoes, Black Cloak, Waist Versatile Belt, SP Elixir, Flash Bang, Poison Sack, Possessed Assets, Internal Funds, and a Versatile Pocket. Also, he has got some invested titles with a total of 1600 CT and equipment invented with 38,910 CP. Oh, and for gold, too. The protagonist was pretty. Blown away by the fact that, despite being the one who brought him to life, he's actually the real deal. He smirked with satisfaction as his character has collection of rare skills and unique traits. He's never had the traits of a genius before. Plus, he has some awesome gear and even a super rare armor. Lee Hoyan smirked, confident that this would make people think he's an experienced gamer. He grinned, fully aware that in the past, he struggled to become a third-class gamer. But now he's discovered the secret to overcoming all obstacles and rising through the ranks. So, the idea is to train a capable subordinate and help them become even more competent. He was feeling pretty good. The system began generating subordinate characters. The protagonist had a big grin on his face, thinking that this was the beginning of something out of the ordinary. He's aware that people with money spend their wealth on those minions. The system was still in the process in creating, but it was nearly finished. Lee Hoyan's smile grew wider, as there has only been one amazing person who has triumphed in this exciting reverse bet. And that guy is him, Lee Hoyan. A notification appeared on the screen, letting him know that his sheet production had finished. This was Caesar, Lee Hoyan's subordinate. The main character was pretty stoked that it was finally done. He was impressed that this guy's got some serious smarts, just by the way he looks. Caesar was a 15-year-old male with no class. Lee Hoyan was really impressed by how cool and relatable it looked. Even though it seemed a bit scary, he didn't really mind because he's now a subordinate who will follow his master's every command. Out of nowhere, things took a turn for the worse when his own creation approached him, giving him a menacing glare. The main character was completely caught off guard, unable to comprehend the situation. He couldn't help but feel a sense of unease, realizing that his creation appeared incredibly intimidating. 
Sure, the main character didn't see any issue and decided to brush it off, opting to just get started. A system notification appeared, indicating that the game Labyrinth is about to begin. The system informed him that the subordinates in the updated Labyrinth world are loyal. But he's gotta be careful because if loyalty drops too low, his subordinate might start refusing his orders. The protagonist was taken aback, swearing as he wondered what was happening. Caesar's eyes glowed red, and he emitted a menacing aura towards his own master. The main character was terrified, looking at him with fear. The system gave him yet another warning about a potential worst-case scenario. His subordinates might not recognize his authority, and could even choose to leave if their loyalty level has significantly decreased. The system reminded him to watch out. Li Hoyan was pretty surprised when he found out that they were going to leave their master. He was aware that this wasn't available in the previous game. End of flashback. He couldn't help but notice that something was seriously off about this guy. No matter how you look at him, he definitely doesn't give off an obedient. Vibe Li Hoyan thought. He closed his eyes and bit his lip, feeling frustrated that things didn't go as planned. It seems like things could take a turn for the worse if he's not careful. He can't help but imagine a scenario where his own subordinate turns against him, leaving him in a tough spot. He suddenly opened his eyes, filled with horror. In that moment, he realized he was in deep trouble. Little did he know, a child was silently watching him from behind. The kid saw an opportunity and ran towards the main character, reaching out to grab something. He became alert when he heard footsteps, quickly spinning around to see what is happening. The kid went after him, and he grabbed something from him. Lee just stood there with a shocked expression. He yelled, realizing the severity of the situation. With his current stats, he was well aware of the danger and the possibility of losing his life. The kid didn't really attack him. He just took something from him and gave him a little push. As a result, he fell down, and the crazy demon stopped. The wild demon stared at his master, his eyes widening in a fiery aura enveloping his body, as if he was ready to strike. The NPC women simply observed the scene, while Lee Hoyan was filled with terror, perspiring profusely, convinced that his life was about to end. Caesar stood before his master, and Lee Hoyan cursed, fearing his impending demise. The guy bent down and extended his hand. The main character was in terror as this is seriously the worst possible situation. Instead of Caesar killing him, he extended his hand to help his master up and asked, Boss, are you alright? He said in a casual tone. The boss was taken aback, thinking he was about to meet his demise. He couldn't find the words. His nerves were on edge. He desperately wanted to speak up but his thoughts were scattered, and his mind went blank. All he could do was stand there, stunned and unable to utter a single word. But out of nowhere, he spoke in a low, serious tone, letting him know that he's not okay. Just got a notification that player Lee Hoyan, Wilhelm Meyer, is currently using a subordinate. Lee got to his feet, his expression turning serious as he looked at his subordinate. The system let him know that relationships of a more relaxed nature are automatically established. Caesar was giving his master a serious look when suddenly Li Hoyan's eyes widened upon seeing another notification about the system adjusting character personalities. Just got another notification that Wilhelm Meyer and Caesar are now officially in a subordinate relationship. He was pretty surprised when the system revealed that he was a charismatic boss in Caesar's eyes. Caesar had a big grin on his face. I think he's got something incredible, Caesar thought to himself. The main character got up completely, but Caesar didn't get up. After this, a bunch of notifications started popping up, letting him know that Caesar could smell the scent of a big shot from him. The system reminded him once more that if he couldn't step up, things could take a turn for the worse. Lee was totally freaked out when he saw that. It made him pale and shake with fear. He was really sweating, trying to understand, but he felt like he got screwed over even worse, like fire getting even redder, he thought. Out of nowhere, a quest popped up, and he quickly read the details. 
subjugation event. The main character was suddenly alerted by this. He was given a quest to catch the pickpocket in the alley. If you don't manage to nab the pickpocket in 10 minutes, his precious initial funds will be gone for good. After reading that, he quickly searched for his money while the kid continued to run. He freaked out when he realized that when the kid accidentally bumped into him and knocked him down, it wasn't just an accident the kid was actually stealing his money. In that moment, he completely forgot about his fear. It was like his rationality and true self had taken a vacation. Lee gritted his teeth with a furious rage. In a voice as deep as the ocean, he declared, Caesar, go get him. Chase him down. Caesar's eyes were on fire and he responded with a resounding, Yes, sir. And because of this, Caesar's subordinate sensed the energy of a tycoon coming from him. But wait, there's more. Underling Caesar also sensed the presence of a big shot from him. Lee eased up when her subordinate began chasing after the young pickpocket. The woman was completely taken aback, with her eyes wide open in surprise. Lee now realizes that he is his underling and all. He's really intimidating. The boss brushed himself off as he let out a sigh of relief. He noticed the girl was still crying. He wondered why she was crying again after Caesar's departure. The main character attempted to reach out to her to check if she was all right. But unfortunately, she didn't pay any attention. He moved closer to her, reaching out to touch her shoulder in an attempt to get her. Attention. However, she met his gaze with a cold glare that made it clear she had no interest in him. Her dismissive attitude left him feeling bewildered. He couldn't help but wonder why she was giving him such a dirty look, like he was some kind of garbage. It was strange, especially since she never treated Caesar that way. All of a sudden, he had a moment of realization and was completely taken. Aback. He couldn't help but feel a surge of anger as he finally understood why the girl was giving him that look. Once again, with his quirky expression and a laid-back voice, he mentioned, You notice that my assistant is more self-assured than he appears. He moved closer to her face and warned her that if she wanted to stay safe, she should always watch her behavior. She screamed in fear and apologized. He spoke to her in the same manner Caesar had previously. There seemed to be more parallels between him and Caesar. Anyway, he spoke, saying, Women, I can't stand people who just talk without taking action. The woman was visibly shaken and in tears, but she mustered the courage to offer him something. She reached into her pocket and pulled out a coin. Lee was a bit puzzled when she handed him just one cooper. The protagonist expressed their disappointment, explaining that it was only enough to buy a half-eaten apple. He felt like saying something, but he shrugged it off and decided to just go with the flow. He didn't bother taking the cooper, he simply left it as it was. Suddenly, the main character receives a notification that his trusty sidekick, Caesar, has caught the pickpocket. The boss let out a sigh of relief and was impressed by the competence of his subordinates. He was doing a great job with whatever tasks he assigns him. The woman behind him became visibly anxious when she saw him returning. She was totally shocked by his actions, unable to fathom the extent to which he went. Lee noticed her shocked expression and quickly turned his gaze forward to see what had caught her. Attention. Lee's eyes widened in surprise and confusion at what his subordinate had done. Caesar strolled nonchalantly towards his boss. The pickpocket was sobbing while he was tied up. Caesar spoke in a low, gruff voice, letting his boss know that he was back. He had immobilized the kid by securing him to his blade, leaving the pickpocket with no choice but to cry. So, the system gave him this tip about catching a pickpocket in the labyrinth world. In the labyrinth world of the fifth generation VR game, players are presented with a range of options when they catch a pickpocket. You have the option to take all the pickpocket's money or establish a friendly relationship with them. By retrieving what they stole from you, you may even receive quests from them. If you're not interested in any quests, you can still find the information you need. Lee was completely taken aback, his jaw dropping in surprise. 
The enthusiastic subordinate informed the young pickpocket about the consequences of taking something that doesn't belong to him and causing harm to his boss. He later reported to his boss that he had imparted some valuable lessons to this inexperienced thief. Lee was taken aback. Sweating bullets. He couldn't help but wonder what had just happened. The girl next to him simply hid her face in fear. The enthusiastic underling wanted to hand him the rope, but he noticed something and inquired about his excessive trembling. He asked again if there was a problem here. He hesitated, and he let out a frustrated curse, realizing that if he did reveal this vulnerable side of himself, his loyalty might waver, and if that were to occur, the consequences would be predictable. Caesar's eyes glowed as he narrowed his eyes dangerously but didn't do anything as he just waited for his boss to say something, and what he said next would determine his fate. Li Hoyan's face turned serious as they expressed their dissatisfaction with the way he handled this. Caesar was shocked as he was speechless at what he said. He let him know that there were no witnesses at all, and if he was concerned that this boy might talk, he would handle it immediately. He felt a wave of worry for the boy's life, but he didn't let it show and spoke firmly about how the death of someone like him wouldn't benefit him at all. He was wondering what the point of doing something like that would be. The crazy underling pondered the situation, considering the advantages this young lad could bring. Meanwhile, the boy was in tears. He opened his eyes, thinking he had a grasp on what the boss wanted. He misunderstood what the boss wanted. Caesar looked at the boy in anger saying that his boss wanted him to find out where he stayed and then take all that he had. When the boy heard that he was horrified and the underling added that only something like this could satisfy someone as merciless as him, Caesar bowed and apologized for not realizing this earlier. He also made the pickpocket boy bow forcefully. Lee crossed his arms and thought to himself, No, I just want to get the quest. The main character was in tears when the system alerted them that their notoriety had gone up by one. He received a notification that Caesar had managed to get hold of the pickpocket's emergency fund of 200. Gold. The underling stared at the gold, clearly puzzled. Lee was surprised, wondering why he had so much money. The kid was stuttering, and he told him that he saw a lot of wealthy pushovers today. The kid added that when the gates open, a bunch of new adventurers will flood into the city. Lee quickly realized that this kid stole the starting money from anyone he encountered, whether they were non-player characters or actual players. He thought it was pretty cool and decided to start off by taking a quest from this NPC. Lee leaned in closer to his face and spoke in a menacing tone, questioning if he planned on continuing his thieving ways. The pickpocket said he won't do it anymore and Caesar just watched all of this in surprise. He spoke in a deep, dark tone, letting him know that's not what he wanted to hear. The pickpocket was taken aback and unsure about what he wanted to hear. The protagonist told him to share a story about his sickly old mother or starving young sibling in order to gain his sympathy. He instructed the pickpocket to describe a relatable situation and the hooligans who were pressuring him into such actions. He was just saying those things because he wanted a quest from this kid. So, the main character goes up to him and says that if he does this, he'll hook him up with a legit job once they escape this crappy place. He mentioned that afterward, he'll be able to access those tasty quest rewards and experience points. Just as he was about to continue, the crazy, underling abruptly grabbed the boy and yelled at him, questioning if he still didn't get it. Caesar yelled at him once more, saying that the boss expected him to give tax to him. Lee was totally caught off guard by the sudden interruption. Caesar yelled that the boss wanted 90% of the pickpocket profits from now on. The main character freaked out, screaming, no, in his head. The boy was really freaked out, and he told the crazy underling that he won't pickpocket ever again. He said he's really serious about it. He sniffled asking for forgiveness. Caesar was really angry, ranting about a thief who only knows how to steal someone else's wallet. He just stopped suddenly and decided to kill this boy. He threatened him that if he dared to use just words to ask forgiveness for stealing from the boss then they have no need for a pickpocket that can't steal money, he stated, 
Li wanted to intervene. But before he could, the boy let out a terrified scream, quickly bowing down and promising to do whatever was asked of him. He desperately pleaded for his life to be spared, vowing to give his best to steal. The crazy underling came to a sudden halt, completely taken aback by the boy's recent actions. Li was a bit confused about what had just happened. A bunch of notifications popped up, saying that the pickpocket was subdued physically and mentally by fear, and the pickpocket promises he'll pay him tax, and because he controlled his subordinate to suppress others, he now has available stats. Charisma is now one of the new available stats. Li, with a serious expression, thought to himself that he doesn't really need it. The protagonist was pale as he didn't want such a charisma, the girl looked at him and concerned wondering why is he like that. Caesar praised his boss, telling him that he was truly amazing. He couldn't believe that he was able to smell the boy like him had money. He praised him again that thanks to him, they have more than 200 gold of starting money. Li Hoyan just paled even more, wondering what the hell he is talking about. He was speechless for a moment. Suddenly he got an idea, and he told the crazy underling, half of it would be his. Caesar simply expressed his gratitude and remained silent. Li was taken aback when he realized that his loyalty hadn't increased at all. It looks like he'll have to put in even more effort to make him become fully loyal. Li had expected he will acknowledge his hard work with at least some recognition. The woman glanced at both of them, informing them that this is the guild building. The boss appeared surprised and bewildered as he gazed at the structure. He seemed to have something to say but remained silent. He was pretty surprised and confused when he saw the building because it looked like it had been abandoned. Armed Adventurer Guild's usually a high-rise building that's in the center of a flourishing city center? Lee thought. The girl opened the door cautiously, while Lee pondered why a city like Brom couldn't have some budget to contract buildings. He wondered, why does it look so rundown? Someone was playing with a knife when they entered. A lot of bad guys gave them a mean look. There are plenty of other people in the building, including the bartender. Everyone gave them. Intense stares. Caesar was starting to get annoyed about this. He asked them in a dark tone. What are they looking at? You bastard got a death wish. He asked with a menacing tone. The protagonist just froze in shock and horror fearing that he is going to kill them. Lee was shocked and quietly asked her where she had taken them. The girl asked anxiously if this wasn't the right place they were. Looking for the criminal guild. He gave a face bomb while his underling just stared at him. Caesar paused, his eyes flashing with an eerie glow. With a mischievous grin, he showered the protagonist with praise, declaring him to be an impressively meticulous boss. The protagonist's eyes widened in sheer terror as his unhinged underling casually mentioned that now that he had what he wanted, he had no further need for the woman and he will get rid of her. Lee was taken aback, wondering why on earth he should do that. He couldn't help but question himself, wondering why Caesar was saying something so utterly terrifying. The boss stayed quiet, his fear evident on his face. His expression suddenly shifted and he adopted a serious demeanor as he uttered the word, Caesar, in a low voice. He insisted that the pickpocket from earlier had a long list of crimes under his belt, so even if they managed to get rid of him, the authorities would likely turn a blind eye. And he said, that's not the deal with this lady. If we mess with regular people, the authorities will come after us. I really don't want to get caught up in all this hassle. The boss gave him a stern look and asked if he needed a more detailed explanation for better understanding. The underling turned around and mumbled, just as one would expect. He walked up to the woman and raised his voice, telling her that it would be better if she didn't show up again. The woman let out a scream and replied, Yes, sir. The protagonist was worried when he saw how scared she was. She ran off in tears, likely feeling quite shaken. The boss glanced at her with sympathy, thinking to himself how unfortunate she seemed. He kept pondering on how she was the second most unfortunate woman he had ever encountered. The boss recalled his initial encounter with that dark gamer in the games. 
and he figured they probably won't cross paths again, considering how vast this world is. He greeted them. He asked if they were here to join their guild. Caesar faced the barman, and he replied, That's right. Lee looked at him in shock as he didn't want to join the criminal guild. The boss just went with the flow and walked up to the counter to find out what he was going to say next. As he strolled along, all the criminals couldn't help but notice his underling and Lee. They all knew that looking at their appearance, there would be bloodshed in the back alley here for a while. The barman mentioned that joining the guild required a payment of five gold. Considering their recent arrival in the city, the barman assumed they only had one gold. Caesar glared at him, clearly annoyed, while the barman insisted they should find money elsewhere and return later. But just as he was about to continue speaking, Caesar abruptly slammed down 19 or 20 gold coins on the desk. The barman was totally caught off guard by the sheer number of gold coins. It was quite a surprise for him, as he had either assumed they had been robbed or simply didn't have that much money. He pulled out something and showed it to them, saying, This is a wooden plaque. It's just a basic proof of identification. Caesar was pretty ticked off, and he said, Are you seriously trying to sell us this thing for five gold? Are you trying to scam? The boss and me or what? He asked. Everyone became curious wondering what boss he was talking about. It was pretty odd to the criminals there since the only person accompanying this guy seemed quite frail. Some criminals were caught off guard when they realized that a strong individual was following the commands of a seemingly weak person. The other person laughed in a slightly eerie manner, curious if he had something on that guy. The other criminal was amazed, he remarked, to be alive even after receiving the weakness of such a tough guy. There may be more to him than meets the eye. But why is he dressed like that? The other person wondered. The other wondered whether he was faking to be one of the newbies outdoors. Lee gave them a cold stare upon hearing all of them. Another crook, who is disparaging the protagonist was ready to take his beer, and he didn't notice Caesar standing behind him, staring at him. He had no idea that Caesar was right behind him, giving him a menacing glare. After a few seconds, he felt someone's gaze on him from behind. He turned his head to see who it was but found himself feeling a bit puzzled. He asked what? Caesar didn't say anything. He just gave him a fierce look. Suddenly he straight up punched this guy in the face, and it was a brutal hit. The force was so intense that it actually cracked his bones. Ouch. The guy fell to the ground, clutching his nose as blood poured out. He seemed bewildered probably wondering why this person had done this to him since his nose was now broken. All the criminals got up, but the crazy underling didn't give a damn. He spoke in a deep tone, asking why they would talk behind the boss's back like that. He asked with a menacing glint in his eyes. He mentioned that this den was really irritating him. He got really angry and clenched his teeth, and he told them all that he might have to kill everyone here. He began to release his blade, causing a wave of unease and fear to wash over everyone as they anticipated the worst. Just as he was about to take out his blade, someone suddenly yelled out, Caesar! He quickly halted and took a quick look over his shoulder. Lee informed him that they had their own set of rules in the slums. He told him firmly to show some respect. Caesar let out a frustrated growl and clenched his teeth. He had a strong urge to take them all down, but he managed to regain his composure and slowly lowered his blade, uttering a curt. Got it. Everyone was completely taken aback by the sudden turn of events. The guy they had been teasing earlier with a few words had managed to instill fear in them. The bartender was just standing there, completely shocked by what had just happened. The underling asked the boss if he has any other business here, the barman did not say anything as he was sweating bullets and paralyzed by fear, and Lee spoke, saying, since they are here, he'd like to work and get rewards. The barman gave three quick taps on the counter, and the quest immediately came into view. Just then, a notification popped up, announcing that a restriction had been lifted on the criminal guilds. Commission List The initial task involved hunting rats in the trash area. 
This quest was designed to be repeatable and suitable for newbies. The objective was to eliminate a significant number of rats, ensuring that the city authorities had no reason to ignore the issue. Requirement Collect 100 rat tails and get a reward of 30 cooper. This will also contribute one point to the guild. The second quest was a bit of a challenge. Routine money collection, difficulty newbie. Description, there's this guy named Bill who runs a junk shop in the trash region. Turns out, he hasn't been keeping up with his taxes like he's supposed to. Take advantage of this opportunity to get a ton of interest from Bill. When it comes to clearing conditions, you'll only need to contribute 1 to 10 silver. And if you have 2 silver or more, you'll earn an interest in 1 silver. The last mission patrol is a tough one, especially for a newbie like him. It's a chance to prove himself and show that he can handle the responsibilities of managing a full-fledged guild. His job is to assist vagabonds in committing serious crimes without getting caught by the vigilante squad. Lee decided to go with the second option, which is a routine money collection. He was a bit frustrated with how stingy they are with the rewards and how much time it takes to complete the quest. The main character figured that the only quest that might be worth it is to get back the interest from the junk shop owner who hasn't paid their taxes. After making up his mind about which quest to take, he informed the barman that he would handle the routine money collection. He then asked about the location of the junk shop where the bill needed to be paid. The bartender said he'd give him a guide and called out to Hans. The man known as Hans didn't want to do it for free and Lee and Caesar glanced behind them to see who this person was. Hans spoke out again, adding, Nothing comes for free. This is a guild rule. The system informed him that this guy, Hans, is far behind on his guild debt. Payments The boss was irritated, wondering if this was some sort of group that specializes in taking advantage of others. Down another street in the slums, Hans chuckled and instructed them to stay close behind him. This was the Brum Slum Market Alley. And Hans strolled away with a happy smile on his face, with Lee and Caesar trailing behind him, while the underling grew slightly irritated with this guy. Caesar grinned maliciously and told his boss that he has chosen something that's benefiting of a boss. He added that he couldn't believe he tried to take and sell off everything that junk shop Bill has. Lee was sweating bullets and totally lost, not sure what he was blabbering on about. The main character knew that if he just let him be, he'd end up causing another issue. The boss mentioned the importance of being respectful this time around. He told him to make sure to make a good decision, and naturally, Caesar misunderstood again. And he grinned, not saying anything. The boss tried to speak up, but seeing his expression, the words got stuck in his throat. They made it to the junk shop bill. In the room, a man sat casually as if anticipating someone's arrival. And sure. Enough, Hans walked in with a smile on his face. Lee was pretty surprised when they took a look around. It wasn't just a bunch of junk these items seemed pretty valuable and could definitely be reused. This place is definitely not your typical junk shop, he thought. Sheesh, look who we have here, the man said. The guy got up and, with a weird smile, mentioned that he had a feeling they weren't here to sell junk. He asked if they were from the guild. This person has been identified as the owner of a questionable junk shop that is significantly overdue on their text payment bill. He had something on his hand that had a really unpleasant smell. Hans was about to shake his hand, but when he noticed something unpleasant on it, he recoiled in disgust and demanded that the person keep their hands away from him. Lee felt uneasy about whatever was on the person's hand. Hans grumbled about how this individual never bothers to wash their hands whenever they visit. Caesar grabbed Hans's shoulder, telling him to get lost. With a smile on his face, he assured his boss that he would comply with his requests in this setting. Lee seemed a bit unsure about what he was talking about, but the underling mentioned that he would respect the rules of this place with a touch of sarcasm. Lee became instantly concerned, wondering what he was going to do as the crazy underling approached the owner of the junk shop. Hey, just curious, what's your connection to him? Hans asked quietly. 
The main character folded their arms, clearly irritated with the individual, and firmly instructed them to be quiet. Caesar didn't mind what was on this guy's hands, so he went ahead and shook his hand. The owner of the junk shop greeted him with a smile and said it was great to meet him. The owner of the junk shop was ready to release his hand, but Caesar wasn't quite ready yet and held on a little tighter. That smile on Caesar's face reminds me of someone, but I can't quite put my finger on who. He's still keeping quiet with that grin of his. He just kept going, and the guy started getting concerned, feeling a bit lost now. Caesar began to squeeze his hand gently, and the junk shop owner grimaced in discomfort. The wild underling squeezed his hand tightly, causing the junk shop owner to let out a scream of agony. Caesar's grin grew wider as he asked, Are you really that thrilled to see me? The guy couldn't respond because he was in excruciating pain, his body racking with broken bones, and his mind overwhelmed, causing him to scream in agony. After Caesar let go, the guy ended up on his knees, and he falls to the ground, lifeless. A system notification popped up, announcing the demise of the notorious slacker who never paid his text bills on time. Hans and Lee were taken aback, while Caesar's eyes turned fiery red, resembling a mischievous demon. He stood there, grinning from ear to ear, as if it were Christmas morning and he had already unwrapped his presents. Lee Hoyan couldn't believe his eyes as he witnessed Caesar's deadly handshake, causing him to break out in a cold sweat. It was like something out of a twisted video game, which it was. The main character just got another notification saying they've earned 350. Golden Interest Caesar slammed his hands on the counter and placed some of the gold coins in it. After that Caesar simply stared at the barman, his face filled with seriousness. Without uttering a word, the protagonist began to grow nervous, sensing the mounting tension. The barman glanced at the gold coins, his eyes narrowing slightly with a hint of suspicion. The main character assured him that they hadn't laid a finger on the thrift store or any of the stuff inside. And he told him to handle the rest by himself. The bartender shrugged and said, Well, I guess that's all there is to it. All the criminals in the bar eyed them suspiciously. A system notification popped up saying that the criminal guild finished their routine money collection. So, get this, he ended up with an extra two silver, making a grand total of 350 gold and 12 silver in interest, plus 10 guild. Contributions Out of nowhere, the barman gave them a nasty look, and the system alerted him that the guild clerk is being extra cautious. Lee is absolutely flabbergasted by the sudden appearance of a Cold War. It's like a plot twist that came out of nowhere, leaving him utterly bewildered. He was sweating profusely, and you couldn't blame him after all, they had sent them on a seemingly simple mission to collect money, and they returned victorious, having relieved the poor soul of his entire life savings. The bartender assured them that they wouldn't have any issues if they decided to venture into the labyrinth at this moment. He was wondering why they had to go and cause trouble when they were so strong. Caesar was getting a bit annoyed and responded that the boss wanted it done like that. He had his own question, wondering why he needed to know. Hans asked the boss, Lee, why he had to take away the commission. He mentioned that he was intended for the small fries to make a living. The protagonist seemed a bit on edge but managed to maintain a serious demeanor as he casually mentioned that there weren't too many commissions he particularly liked. The barman let out a groan. Upon hearing this, he let out a sigh and informed them that he had thrown in the towel. Since they have plenty of money, he'll just go ahead and promote them both. The crazy underling was simply listening to all of this as the barman mentioned that the promotional offer costs 10 gold for two levels. The underling remained silent and casually tossed the gold coins onto the counter. The barman was taken aback as he stared at the gold coins. He handed them two badges letting them know that these badges were for official guild members. He mentioned that it was made with some kind of magic so they could easily recognize each person. They could also learn some skills by joining the criminal guild. He told them that they should keep in mind that acquiring skills requires guild contribution. And 
He said to make sure they hid the badge as well because some of those vigilantes might recognize them. Lee was trying to grab the badges, but the barman quickly snatched them away before he could get his hands on them. The barman said to him that he's showing the protagonist those badges at the moment. Lee suddenly became still, with a serious expression in his eye. He was feeling a bit confused and frustrated, wondering if this person was mocking him. The bartender mentioned that it takes a while to enter the names and information of the members, which surprised Lee. He gave the barman a serious look, causing the barman to feel a bit uneasy. The barman jokingly remarked that he seemed ready to tear him apart after cracking a joke. He then proceeded to say, Okay, I'll fill you in on the details about the lodgings managed by the guild. Caesar couldn't help but question if this was some kind of joke. In a moment of frustration, he roughly grabbed the barman's shirt and gave him a piercing stare. The protagonist was taken aback, unsure why Caesar was suddenly acting so aggressively. The wild underling shouted that he never claimed to be joking at that moment. The bartender was at a loss for words, but after a moment, he mentioned that the accommodations were on the house. Caesar let out a burst of anger, his voice filled with frustration as he made it clear that he had no interest in that kind of thing. He spoke with a hint of darkness, accusing the person of mocking the boss. Lee thought to himself that he was interested in that type of thing, but he refrained from saying it out loud, aware of the potential consequences. Caesar's face had a rather intense expression as he informed the barman that a formal apology would be necessary to appease the boss. He warned him that if he didn't comply, his life would be in serious danger starting today. The other criminal stood by, doing nothing but observing. The barman was taken aback by the news, while Lee anxiously feared the possibility of causing harm once more. The barman was not happy, questioning whether he thought he was going too far. The wild underling became even more enraged, as this was not even too extreme for him. He casually released his blade and effortlessly sliced the counter into pieces. There was dust and debris scattered all over the place. Suddenly, the barman's demeanor shifted, and he couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. Lee looked pale, clearly taken aback by the havoc that Caesar had unleashed. The crooks began to ditch this guild and make a run for it to save their own skins. He said sorry for his rude behavior, sounding a bit nervous. Caesar shouted once more, to apologize to his boss and not him. Lee was really nervous, and the barman kindly apologized. The wild demon growled and inquired about his token of sincerity. The man swiftly pulled out one thousand gold coins, and humbly offered them, saying, Even though it's not much, please accept this. The system informed him that he had acquired one hundred gold. The main character was quite surprised by this unexpected windfall. The boss was pretty stoked about getting 100 gold just for one apology. He couldn't help but grin wider as he realized how lucrative this opportunity was. Little did he realize that he was also starting to embrace Caesar's craziness. Caesar noticed his dark smirk, and he misinterpreted it, assuming it meant something different. And he yelled, wondering if he didn't notice that the boss was in a terrible mood. Oh, when he saw Lee's smile, he assumed he was in a terrible mood. So there he was, the boss looking like a deer caught in headlights, completely baffled by the antics of the crazy underling. I mean, come on, 100 gold was more than enough. Can you believe it? Caesar couldn't help but keep yelling about how the boss was fuming over his complete lack of sincerity. Lee couldn't help but hold his head in horror thinking to himself. Oh my god, this person is absolutely insane. Please, for the love of sanity, stop. The barman looked terrified as tears welled up in his eyes. In a shaky voice, he asked if he could offer something extra. So, he stumbled upon. This badass broadsword, plus three strength, and the system was kind enough to provide him with the description. It's a class of magic sword, falling under the category of broadswords, and it's got one hell of a fierce edge. Compared to regular broadswords, this one has an impressive cutting force. The special material used to forge it also enhances its durability by reducing the reaction. Also, the 
Blade's Edge has an extra cutting force thanks to the embedded vigor, which is a major advantage. The boss smiled as he examined the blade, considering it to be a pretty decent sword. He couldn't help but think to himself how awesome it was that the sword he got was so sharp and strong. It could probably cut through anything. He still believes that it can probably cut through about 2 centimeters more than its current reach. He was really impressed by how amazing close combat is for close quarters combat. The boss decided to give the blade a try, casually swinging it around. Caesar and the barman observed him not saying anything. The protagonist couldn't help but smirk, and he cleared his throat with a foolish ahem. Caesar's eyes grew wide, completely misunderstanding a simple ahem. His eyes were practically shooting lasers and he spun around with a face that could curdle milk. The boss was just wide-eyed, pondering what is happening now. The crazy underling exclaimed that he shoved such an extremely poor sword in their faces, leaving the protagonist bewildered as to what on earth he was babbling about. The deranged demon continued to yell, appearing as if he was on the losing end. Lee couldn't believe what he was seeing, his mind racing with disbelief. He couldn't help but wonder, What on earth do I do now? Well, he seemed pretty pleased with himself just a moment ago. Caesar was absolutely furious, threatening to behead this audacious individual who clearly has no clue about respect. He swung his sword with a flourish, aiming to give his opponent a haircut they'd never forget. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, another sword swooped in to save the day and clashed with his. The barman was spared, at least for the time being. Caesar was a bit puzzled trying to figure out who had put a stop to him. Out of nowhere, a girl appeared from the attic, hanging upside down. She greeted him with a wide grin and asked, What's all the fuss about? Caesar took his sword and put it back, leaving her in awe. The wild underling referred to her as a wench, instructing her not to interrupt. She was taken aback by his choice of words. And she was like, Wow, what a masterpiece! There's a new character in the guild who's a total nutcase, she said with a grin. Hey there, what's your name? She asked. The crazy underling, still having that serious expression, responded that he sees her and asked the woman to share her name. She responded with a playful tone, introducing herself as Lena and addressing the person as Your Royal Highness, though her sincerity seemed questionable. The barman and the boss found her personality to be quite unique. The boss was shocked by her casual way of speaking in front of someone like Caesar. He couldn't help but wonder if she was intentionally seeking danger. Lee didn't even realize that she was actually pretty thrilled about a genuine lunatic showing up in the guild. He warned her, saying that he'll say this one last time, and once again, he referred to her as a wench, instructing her not to interrupt again. She burst into laughter and jokingly questioned why he bothered to ask for her name if he was just going to keep teasing her. Lee was really surprised and worried about her safety since Caesar had already given her two warnings. But based on Caesar's stats, it seems like he must have experienced some kind of chaos in his past. He should just naturally be able to spot another strong person. The boss could tell that if Caesar was hesitating, they must be someone with exceptional strength. The protagonist wonders if this woman surpasses others in terms of skills and experience. All of a sudden, his eyes bulged out of his head as he had a mind-blowing realization. In a sudden moment of panic, he clutched his head as he realized that the person standing before him was none other than a high-ranking member of the guild.